Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Blake. I'm very sorry if I've kept people waiting. Um, so today's witness is uh, Mr. Civic. Can we yeah. call Mr. Civic? Thank you. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but, and the, nothing truth. but the truth. Thank you. You may sit. Thank you very much. Can you give your full name, please? Uh, my name is David Civic. Um, Mr. Sibbett, you should have in front of you a witness statement. I um, do. And is that statement dated the 26th of August of this year? Yes? Yes, I have that. Thank you. Um, and on the final page, page 19, there's a signature there. Can you confirm that that's your signature? That is indeed my signature. Thank you. And is that statement true to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. For the purpose of the record, the statement is WITN 03350100. Uh, Mr. Sibic, thank you very much for attending the inquiry today. As you know, I'm going to be asking questions on behalf of the inquiry. Um, your statement and the exhibits are now in evidence, so anything that I'll ask you will be supplementary to that. I'm going to start with your background. Um, you started your career in the civil service in 1960. I right? did, a long time ago. And I think you began in the post office itself. That's correct. And what did you do in the post office? Uh, I started by working in what I think was called the establishments division. Uh, it was concerned with postman's pay and issues like that. Thank you. Then you moved to what was then called the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications. When the uh, post office moved from being a government department, there was a small sponsoring ministry set up to, to do the things that sponsoring ministries do, uh, and I moved to that rather than staying in the post office. And then at some stage you became the private secretary to the permanent secretary in, in that department. Yes, I did. Uh, and then eventually that department, department became the Department for Trade and Industry. It was absorbed into the, uh, the, the, the DTI as, as then was. And in 1989 you became director of posts. Correct. And you retired from the civil service in 2000. Yes. In the period that we're dealing with, in, in this phase, procurement, uh, acceptance and rollout, it looks uh, as though uh, you were the most experienced member of the civil service when it came to uh, matters relating to the post office. Uh, I think that's almost certainly correct, yes. Thank you. Um, before we start, uh, do you have any general observations on how the post office was governed during your period? Um, well, that, that is an absolutely huge question, which I'm, I'm sure you will be looking at in much greater detail in, in phase six of this inquiry. Uh, I suppose what I can say is that uh, there was a convention at the time uh, that the way these organisations should be governed uh, was that the government, a minister, uh, would appoint the board and the board was responsible for all operational issues within uh, the post office, uh, reporting obviously to the minister, who would have a regular dialogue with the, uh, with the chairman. But the overriding principle was you, you appoint the chairman and, and, and the board, and then you either back them or sack them. Uh, you didn't meddle day to day. And uh, part of the argument for that uh, was that if you were going to meddle day to day, if you were going to have your civil servants crawling over everything that the uh, operational people in the organisation tried to do, you would not attract to the top of the organisation people of the sort of quality that you needed to attract. 
uh, and we'll get to the detail in due course, um, but in practice, uh, was the post office left alone to get on with its business, or, or was there meddling? Uh, I suppose uh, it depends on, 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 on what you call meddling. Um, this overall principle was, was there, um, but as almost everything in the real world or the political world, uh, it gets a bit overtaken from time to time by events. Uh, and Horizon turned out to be one such event. I'm going to take things chronologically, starting with your first involvement. Um, at paragraph seven of your witness statement, you've said um, you describe the long-running saw between the benefits agency and the post office and officials being scarred by their involvement. Uh, those are obviously powerful words. Um, can you tell us about your early involvement in the project, so the early to mid-1990s, uh, and those differences? Uh, I was not particularly involved in the early part of, of, of all of this. Uh, my close involvement uh, really started at the point when the uh, Secretary of State uh, for the benefits, responsible for the Benefits Agency wrote to my Secretary of State and to the Treasury uh, Secretary of State saying, uh, look, um, we've got a problem here. Uh, we need to get round the table and sort it. And that, I think, was in the late summer, early autumn of 1997. Um, I was aware before then um, of the Horizon uh, project. Uh, and I was aware from uh, talking, perhaps informally, to people uh, that there were these frictions. Can I just pause you there for one second? Sorry, only because we've lost the chair on the screen. Oh. So may have to wait a moment. There is a transcript, so everything you've said will be re recorded. Yeah. We're just trying to re-establish a connection. So we can see you now. Can you see and hear us? Yes, for, for the first time, uh, I think, in however many months this has been happening, a, a glitch occurred. So I, I didn't catch um, what Mr. Sibic was going to say in answer to your questions around paragraph seven, Mr. Blake. Ah, uh, so this is the, the long running saw. Uh, you, you described in 1997, your first awareness that that, that was were... that was the first time uh, that ministers were involved, and therefore I was involved in having to brief ministers on how to best take all of this forward and what our line uh, might be. And you said officials being scarred by their involvement. I I, I knew um, before then, uh, but it was interesting to have it confirmed by uh, a senior official from uh, DSS that uh, these issues had been rumbling on for a long, long time. The benefits agency, oh, they can obviously speak for themselves, but uh, they, they felt that uh, they were being um, ripped off, if I can put it like that, by the charges uh, that uh, they were having to pay to get the work done by the, uh, by the post office. Post office, of course, thought the benefits agency uh, were not paying nearly enough for the work that they were carrying out uh, for the benefits agency. And I think these, these squabbles just, just, just went on. Uh, I, I suspect every time that the uh, contract had to be uh, renegotiated. Um, the, Benefits Agency, or DSS, uh, also had um, 
a particular problem in, as I understand it, they were not able to get their accounts signed off by their auditors because of the volume of fraudulent uh, transactions around the benefit payment card or other uh, payment methods uh, and the large amount of money that, that, that went missing. Uh, so uh, th they also had that interest. How important was the benefits card aspect of the Horizon project in those early days? Um, I think it was uh, absolutely crucial from the point of view of uh, post office counters. Um, the great fear was that if too many customers, uh, if they were for forced to accept automatic credit transfer of their payments, um, would no longer go into post offices and apart from withdrawing their money, uh, actually spending their money on the private side of the, the shop, the so-called footfall. Uh, and I think this, this, this footfall aspect um, was hugely important uh, to uh, sub-postmasters, to the uh, National Federation of Sub-Postmasters, sub uh, and the threat of ACT um, had some years earlier resulted in the National Federation um, organising a significant protest march uh, down Whitehall, as, as, uh, uh, as I recall, um, from people not so much, I think, um, opposed to the idea of having to have their payments into, in, into bank accounts, but the fear that they would lose their village shop uh, or their corner shop if they lived in an, in a, in an urban area. Um, I think you know, this, was the, this was the big concern uh, and why politically uh, it was so important to have in place, if you were trying to get away from the fraud-prone uh, paper-based uh, pension books and so on, uh, to have something else in place and the benefit payment card was what they came up with to serve that purpose. Um, Keith Todd, the former CEO of ICL, um, has given evidence that he didn't expect the complexities uh, arising from what he um, had thought were two aligned government entities, the, the Benefits Agency and the Post Office. How obvious would it have been outside of government uh, that there were these frictions between the benefits agency and the post office? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think it would have been uh, evident to the general public necessarily, um, but I'm sure people who had any real involvement in either of these organisations uh, would, have, would have known that this was, uh, a, a, as I say, a long-running difficulty. The procurement process began in 1994. Were you involved in that at all? No, I was not. I was not. I knew that I knew that it was going on, um, but but I wasn't involved in any way. Were you aware that Pathways Technical Solution was the least preferred option of the three bidders? Uh, the, the Tom, Dick, and Harry, as I believe it, it was uh, uh, referred to. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, subsequently, um, I, I was certainly aware that uh, uh, that ICL Pathway had been accepted. Um, over the other two bidders, in part because it appeared that they were willing to take the biggest element of risk in the project. Uh, and were you aware that their technical solution was the least preferred of the three? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I was conscious of this. Um, in, in, in the early days, uh, I had no reason to believe that uh, ICL would not be capable of delivering uh, what they had contracted to uh, to deliver. Um, we'll, we'll come to work that was carried out in the summer of 1998, um, but at the procurement stage, or, or between the procurement stage and that period, uh, were you aware, for example, that concerns had been raised about um, a system known as riposte during the procurement stage?
my understanding um, was that uh, riposte was something that emerged once it had been decided not to go ahead with the benefit payment card. Uh, I'm not a computer expert, not even terribly computer literate, but what I did understand, um, and I understood from uh, talking to senior people in ICL, that ripping out the benefit payment card part of the system and replacing it with something else was absolutely a non-trivial thing to, to have to do um, and would require a, a lot of work and a certain amount of time. To answer your question about riposte, uh, my understanding was that riposte kind of emerged uh, when you were looking at the, I think it's called middleware or shareware, um, the, the, for, for, the, for the system going forward without the benefit payment card. I, I wasn't aware that it was in, in any sense an issue whilst the benefit payment card was still the way forward. We will in due course come to some references to that system in 1998, so I don't want to, um, uh, I'm not, I, I'll take you to that. Um, but were you aware, for example, that the evaluation board um, had concluded that Pathway required a proactive management stance going forward from the procurement stage? Um, I think probably not, not, not really. Um, uh, I, I had no reason to believe that the Pathway project was not being well managed until it emerged that it was running late and over budget and, and, and so on, um, which, which was, uh, I, think the, the, I think the system originally went live in 96, and it was in late 97 uh, that the two parties uh, uh, put Pathway um, uh, it, 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 into a, a, a position of we can we can pull the plug on this now if we want to. We've 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 got the right now to pull the plug on it if we want to. And as I say, it was about that time uh, that ministers got involved because uh, they could see well, they could see a car crash coming. Um, so let's move to the spring to autumn of 1998. Uh, you've dealt with that at paragraph 15 to 17 of your witness statement. Um, and the Horizon Working Group. Can you tell us why the Horizon Working Group was set up? Yes. Um, uh, first, uh, there, there's some confusion. There, there were two Horizon Working Groups. Um, the, the first one was the sort of ministerial one, senior officials and so on with Adrian Montague's uh, technical group reporting to it. There was a second um, uh, group set up, um, which at the time nobody could think of an original name to distinguish it from the first one, I suppose. Uh, but that was more to keep uh, some of the other parties, so the NFSP, um, CWU, and um, uh, and, and so on, to, to, to keep them involved. It was also thought that <coughs> because uh, it was their members who were going to be using this system, that it would be a very useful body to monitor progress of the rollout once, once that had started. So that had an ongoing role, if you like, the second one. Um, it was chaired initially uh, uh, by Ian McCartney, I think, um, and subsequently uh, by Alan Johnson. Yes, and I think you referred to them in your witness statement as the Working Group 1998 and the Working Group yes. 1999. Yes, yes. And let's focus on the Working Group 1998 for now. Yes. Um, can we go to HMT 00000034, please? Thank you very much. Um, this is the report that they produced in, in July 1998. Can you tell us the background to this report, please? 
Um, uh, well, the, the background to it um, was uh, to look at where the project had got to, what options there were um, moving forward, um, and uh, to make sure as well through the, the technical subgroup um, that the technical aspects of it uh, had been properly explored and properly understood by government. Can we turn to page four, please? That's internal page three, but it's page four on the PDF. Thank you. This is the summary and conclusions, and I'm just going to read from 1.1, the, the end of 1.1. It says, we were asked to consider, uh, first, whether the project is technically viable, and if so, how quickly it can be completed, and at what cost to government, and second, the direct and indirect costs of cancellation and of any alternative available to deliver the project's objectives. And then it says, we set up an independent panel of experts to address the first question. Uh, the independent panel of experts it is the group that's uh, led by Adrian Montague. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, thank you. And then can we look at um, down the page to 1.4, please? These are the three options that this group set out at this stage, so the summer of 1998. Uh, number one was seeking to continue the project. Uh, and scrolling down, the second option would be to reshape the project by cancelling the benefit payment card. And the third option, terminating the whole project. Um, so those were the three options in play at that stage. Can we look at the recommendations on page eight, please? And it's at the bottom of page eight. Thank you. Um, so the recommendations, starting at 1.7, uh, the working group, apart from the DSS and Treasury Social Security team, recommends that, and then over the page, thank you very much. Um, first, in line with option one, ICL pathways should be given terms for continuing with the project. Uh, so essentially, their first recommendation is continuation. Uh, and then we see, for example, the third bullet point there. If ICL can't accept those terms, or if negotiations can't be satisfactorily concluded within two months, ministers should sanction the public sector parties withdrawing from the contracts on the grounds of ICL pathways, non-performance, and we should implement option three. Uh, so the options there are continuation, give them a chance, uh, but if negotiations break down, withdraw. Is that a fair summary there? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, and then below that, at 1.8, it says, DSS recommend a similar approach with I ICL, uh, with ICL, but based on option two. So that's option two was getting rid of the benefit card part of the program. Continuing with the project, but dropping the benefit payment card, yes. Uh, and then it says Treasury Social Security team prefers option three, option three being cancellation. Um, now, DSS and Treasury Social Security team are quite significant parts of this working group uh, in, in that, uh, who formed the working group? It was the DTI. It was set, set, set up by the Treasury. Yes. Yes, but it, it was um, the, the DSS and the Treasury Social Security team and the DTI were presumably members of oh, yes. the group. Oh, yes. Yes. So, in other words, translating 1.8, um, the DTI agrees uh, with continuation. The Treasury, save for their Social Security team, agree with continuation. I, oh, you're, you're, you're not think, so sure. I think the, 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 the Treasury probably at, at this point um, were, were wavering. They, they appeared to start off being quite firmly um, opposed to the project um, and, and seeing, um, understandably, the benefits from uh, ACT. Uh, I think um, they, they, they moved a bit, probably with the personnel um, involved to, I thought, understanding the problems that cancellation 
would cause politically, uh, both in terms of the network of post offices, uh, but also uh, the, um, in the harm to the country's industrial strategy, in particular the damage, possibly even bringing collapse of, of ICL, Fujitsu being uh, a, a, a major inward investor and so on. And I think those issues started to weigh a bit more heavily in some treasury mines, at least. So at this stage, who is it that really supports option one? And that's the recommendation of the group, but it seems as though even at this stage, the DSS certainly don't, and the Treasury Social Security team don't. Uh, well, well, I think, I think um, the group um, didn't succeed, uh, if it, indeed it was even trying to do that, um, in persuading um, certain members of the group uh, that continuation was, was not the best way forward. Um, uh, and this was the issue that was then fought over, is perhaps putting it rather too strongly, um, for quite a few months after, after that. Um, the section on technical viability is on page 12, and can we have a look at that, please? Um, if we could scroll down to the second half of that page. Thank you. So it says the panel has concluded. Is that the independent panel um, that we, you mentioned before with Adrian Montague, or is that...? Uh, uh, yes, I think that's what it's referring to. The panel has concluded that the project is technically viable, although there are some risks, um, in particular around scalability and robustness. The programme is probably the biggest of its kind, and the system has had to be tested at the level of its component parts. The panel is satisfied these risks are being well managed by ICL Pathway, but they nevertheless remain. Uh, the system is necessarily heavily dependent on a third-party middleware product called Repost. ICL Pathway have taken steps to cover their dependency on the product. So that's where Repost is mentioned. So yes, it is. Yes. It, 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 it is. And uh, I have to confess that I don't remember uh, Repost um, being such a, a, a major part of the project at this stage. Uh, uh, as I said, I know it became a, a major issue uh, when the benefit payment card part of the system uh, had, to be, had to be removed and replaced with something else. But um, uh, what we did know, I think, from Adrian Montague's report was that uh, Repost had been used uh, by a number of other post offices, I think, and certainly uh, other applications. So they had reason to uh, believe that it would be uh, fit for purpose. I know that later on there was um, uh, discussion um, way above my head in terms of technical understanding about repost and web-based repost and um, whether if they adopted that it would uh, negate some of the features of Windows NT which had hitherto been relied on to carry out certain functions and so on. So uh, I think it was not without some technical controversy. Um, and if we look below that, the panel also believes that the basic infrastructure is very robust for the future and is generally based on industry standard products. Uh, it should therefore allow Pockel to compete for new business in a variety of markets and, for example, develop new applications based on smart cards. Um, the panel has seen no evidence to suggest the systems being developed by BA and Pockel to connect up the systems being developed by Pathway will not work as required. Let's look at the report itself. So th that section is on technical viability, and that, that's the heading there. Um, and what it's highlighted is some risks around robustness. That's that first bullet point. Uh, and also um, some concerns about the use of repost. 
albeit at 3.1.5, it says the basic infrastructure is very robust. I, I, I think it may, may well be that um, if Repost was, was a part of, of it at that stage, um, it was just, uh, as it were, a standard industry um, uh, application um, that, was, that was working perfectly well. Um, my, again, my limited understanding was that uh, the benefit payment card um, was operated within the system on a kind of batch basis uh, so that the information would be from it would be collected up at the end of the day uh, and presumably consolidated and then uh, fired off back to the benefits agency or, or whoever uh, over lines that were uh, leased or paid for uh, much more cheaply the, than uh, if you had the thing online all the time during the day. Uh, I, 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 I suspect that if we could think back 20 or 25 years, um, all of that would make a, a lot more sense than it perhaps would seem to today. when. But, but maybe the, you wouldn't even consider these as problems. Uh, they could, uh, but you, you would accept that what's in front of you is at least some concerns about robustness and dependency on repost. Uh, yes, I would absolutely um, accept that. Uh, and perhaps we should look at the Montague report itself, which may assist to develop that further. Yeah. Can we look at poll 00028094, please? Um, so this is the report. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the other author, or in fact, all three authors? Um, who, who was Adrian Montague? Uh, Adrian Montague um, was the person who was in charge of the government's PFI initiative. And Bill Robbins? I don't know. I think he was head of the Northern Ireland Social Security Agency. Okay. Um, and Alec Wiley? Again, I don't know. Um, he was Director General of Communications and Information Services at the Ministry of Defence. Does that um, help your recollection or, or not? not? Not really, I'm afraid, no. Do you know how they were selected for that particular project? How Adrian Montague was? Adrian Montague or, or all three? Well, I... I, I I imagine Adrian Montague um, uh, him, himself recruited those two people. I don't know that. Uh, we'll, we'll be hearing from uh, yeah. Sir Adrian. Uh, OK. okay. Um, why, why Adrian Montague? Well, uh, this was, Horizon was at that point, um, a massive PFI scheme. Um, so it's not, um, not surprising, perhaps, that he was selected for that task. He wasn't himself a, a technical expert, though. I, I believe not. No. Um, you said in your statement that ministers and officials were effectively reliant on uh, these experts to inform them of technical issues. Yes. Was there a, a standing body of technical advisers within government uh, dealing with Horizon, or, or was it no. reliant on pro uh, reports such as this? It was reliant on reports. Um, uh, uh, such as this. Uh, what, I, what I would say um, is that uh, I know that the post office itself um, had an IT department headed by, I can't remember his name, but I believe he was very well respected within the, within the, within the IT industry. And I, I'm sure the benefits agency uh, likewise would have had their own uh, technical experts. So it's not that the project lacked technical people um, uh, looking at it and evaluating it. Was government therefore dependent on what they were told by the post office? Uh, dependent on what we were told by the technical subcommittee. Um, they, were, they were there uh, to provide technical expertise to all the government parties involved equally, uh, rather than each of us trying to set up our own 
expert and have experts layered on experts layered on experts and so on. Um, can we look at page three of this document, which provides the executive summary? Um, the third bullet point under background reads as follows. In, in the light of concerns over progress, this panel, chaired by the head of the Treasury Task Force on Private Finance, was set up to make an independent assessment of whether the programme was technically viable. Um, if so, how quickly it could be completed and at what cost? Is that your recollection of its purpose? Yes, it is. The issue, it seems, from the third bullet point, is one of viability rather than, for example, reliability. Would you agree with that? At that stage, in 1998? Uh, yes, um, given that that was a finding of the technical committee. Yes, but it, it, the focus, the, the word that we've used, uh, we, we've heard both from the... Um, overall working group report and from this report uh, is one of viability I think what was meant by that was technical viability yes uh, there, there were financing issues uh, of course um, and they come up a bit later on in, uh, in, in all of this but I think at this point one is talking about technical viability will the system work will it do what it's supposed to do um, Peter Copping um, of PA Consulting has given evidence to this inquiry, um, and he has described the task that he was asked to carry out for, for this um, expert panel as calibrating the art of the possible uh, rather than looking at, for example, technical faults and defects. Um, would you agree with that? Uh, well, that was, that was his view. Um, uh, I mean, I, I have no real basis for, 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 for challenging that, but what we, what government needed was advice on whether this thing uh, can be made to work and, and do the job uh, that, it was, uh, that it was set up to do. <clears throat> Would you accept that it wasn't a report that addressed uh, at a very detailed level issues such as technical faults and reliability of the system? Um, when I read the report of um, the, the Adrian Montague group, um, it looks to me as though it does go into quite a lot of technical detail. Um, and I, I imagine they drew on whatever they needed to, to draw on um, to, to, to come up with, with that. Uh, I think it was quite reassuring, uh, and I don't think it was kind of deliberately slanted because that's what ministers or anyone else wanted to hear. Um, and perhaps we can look at the findings. If we look at the second finding, though, the second bullet point, um, it says, our view is the programme is technically viable. There must be some risk around scalability and robustness because the system has had to be tested at the level of component parts but we're satisfied these risks are being well managed by Pathway. Um, so their view being expressed there is that the programme itself is technically viable, uh, albeit there are risks with regard to scalability and robustness. Um, is that a fair reading of um, that finding? Yes, I think, I, I think that is um, e exactly right. Uh, if there was, if there were issues around testing, and they emerged later on as well, uh, I think it was around the fact that um, this is a, an immense project in terms of the numbers: twenty thousand post offices, forty thousand counter positions. If I vaguely remember the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the numbers. Um, and I would have thought anything that you tried to put together, you can, you can test in a much more limited environment, but you don't know what's going to happen when you roll it out uh, at, that sort of, at that sort of scale. 
Um, and I wonder whether uh, the testing that was done at the end, um, uh, after the benefit payment card had gone from the system, uh, whether that was sort of tested at, at sufficient scale, uh, I don't know. I seem to remember seeing uh, bits of paper um, uh, around the place uh, where, where people were expressing concerns that it hadn't been. Um, uh, I, I think some of these pieces of paper um, came from the National Federation of Sub-Postmasters, uh, where members who had uh, early experience of the system um, were finding all sorts of bugs in it that they were reporting upwards. Um, I don't think it's surprising that there were such bugs. Um, I, 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 my understanding of the way these huge systems work um, whether they're the bank systems or government systems or, or anything else, uh, you know, there will be bugs. Um, and the issue is whether they can be identified quickly enough and whether they can be put right quickly enough. And is that kind of uh, analysis, I, I think your view is that that should take place towards the rollout stage or, or later down the line than, for example, 1998? Uh, I think... I think what I'm saying is that you, you, you need to test the system at all stages, but when it's kind of complete, when you're about to push the button and roll it out to, to all of these post offices, you, you do want to make sure, I would suggest, that you have tried to test the thing at scale as thoroughly as you possibly can. Looking again at that second finding, um, where they say there must be some risk around scalability and robustness, yes. um, would it be fair to say that the expert report wasn't finding um, the Horizon system at that stage as robust? That, that wasn't a finding that they were making. Um, uh, I will, out of fairness, take you to, yeah. to the next paragraph, um, which does say... I'll, I'll read that. There is good evidence of future-proofing at all levels. The basic infrastructure is very robust for the future. And in the main, industry standard products have been used. The system should allow Pockle to compete for new business in a variety of markets, including banking and financial services. New applications based on smart card technology should be relatively straightforward and economic. If online applications are required, they may take longer and require more investment. So looking at those two paragraphs, yep. is a fair summary that in terms of the actual working of, Hor of the Horizon system, there are certainly risks around robustness. Um, the basic infrastructure itself is robust, <coughs> very robust for the future, but there are undoubtedly risks with regards to scalability and robustness of, for example, the software that it would use. Yeah, I, 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 I think <laughs> that's what I was probably rather inadequately uh, trying, to, trying to express, um, that the system had been tested, I wouldn't say in the laboratory, because obviously it was a lot, a lot more than that. Um, the system uh, had been thoroughly tested, and all the bits were shown to work, and, and, and so on. But when you start rolling it out into the real world, you are bound to get problems coming up with it. I think the, uh, the, the, the final sentence of that, if online applications are required, they may take longer and require more investment. And, and that was also very much my understanding, that it's one thing to take the benefit payment card out of the system, though you still need to test how it works sort of without that, um, but what you need to replace it with is smart card technology, uh, and that that still that still had to be developed. That was a, a bit of an un, as I understood it, that was a bit of an unknown um, at that time. And ICL, I think, recognised that there was actually quite a lot of development work uh, still to be done on that. Would you accept that those two paragraphs there 
are, are not signing off Horizon as being robust? Um, I, I think it's signing it off as being robust as far as they had got. But it wasn't finished. There was more to be done. Um, and then the scalability thing was always going to be um, have a, a big question mark over it. You know, would it really work at, I think it was something like 40,000 counter positions? Um, so you, you then have not just issues about the system itself, but about the training to use it, whether it's easy to use, um, whether uh, some 80-year-old uh, sub-postmistress in the Orkneys um, is going to easily get to grips with that technology. And I can, I, I, can, I can feel for the poor lady because I wouldn't be very good at it either. Um, so I, I think your evidence is that it was saying that it was sufficient at that stage, but there were undoubtedly risks with regards to scalability, for example. Uh, ab absolutely. Uh, and possibly not, not just uh, scalability. Um, I, I, what, what I recall was that at the end, in a big rush, after it had been decided to drop the benefit payment card, um, the system had to be adapted to work without it and, and, and perhaps as far as possible to make um, uh, provision for things to be added uh, later on. Uh, and there was then a lot of... I don't like to, 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 to use the word pressure because it sounds as though somebody is sort of breathing down their necks and saying, get on with this. Uh, the pressure came from um, the political decision to uh, finally agree that the benefits agency could start rolling out uh, their ACT um, solution uh, from 2003. Uh, which was not a very long way ahead, um, given the, the time it takes for all of these things to, uh, to, to work through. So that was, that was, if you like, the pressure to get the system uh, done and rolled out. Uh, of course, it wouldn't have been accepted by Pockel if they thought there were, any, there were major flaws with it. Uh, I remember there were a couple of flaws uh, identified at the very end, uh, just before the sign-off, um, and, and they were put right and they were tested and shown to be uh, OK, so that Bockel was satisfied with that, and then they wrote a rather last check. So we'll get to all of that probably this afternoon, but, uh, but I'm happy to stay with it briefly now. Um, is it therefore your view that ultimately... Um, Horizon w was rushed out after the benefits agency pulled out of the project. I, I, I don't like to say rushed out because that sounds as though it was just kind of you know, get it out of here willy nilly. Uh, I don't think it was it was that at all. I do think that there was a lot of um, uh, pressure, a lot of desire on on the part of the post office. Uh, to get this thing moving, um, because if you if you sit around too long, you're not going to get it all sorted by the time ACT comes along, and you want to get it out there and in use in order to persuade banks and other organisations to start using it, uh, because apart from anything else, uh, you're going to need additional revenue streams when the amount that the benefits agency is asking you to do uh, is reduced, and therefore the amount of income you get from that is reduced. Thank you. Um, returning to the findings, can we just scroll down a little bit, please? Thank you. So uh, it goes on there. A further nine months delay to the program is our best forecast, with September 2001 for national rollout completion. Critical path issues will have to be resolved fast to make this possible. 
and the date could be brought forward with commitment and goodwill on all sides. I mean, perhaps that is, uh, gives an indication as to the time pressures that may be involved in yes, dollars, even yes. at that stage, while the benefits uh, card system was part of the project. Do, do you agree with that? Uh, yes, I think so. And, uh, moving down to the bottom of that page, driven mainly by timetable slippage, the sponsor's business cases are eroding. The direct cost of delay is estimated at £180 million, over half of which falls to the sponsors. Potential savings from fraud reduction would also be delayed. Pathway, on the basis of the figures it had, has provided, would make an overall loss if the contract continued on its present terms and would require an extension to break even. Um, so, I mean, perhaps in, even in the summer of, of 1998, uh, there seemed to be significant time pressures to complete the project. I think that's right. And can we go over the page, please? Uh, we, say, we say time pressures. Um, uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 the pressures came at least in part, from the fact that all the disadvantages of the situation as it was then um, were, were, were costing everybody money. Uh, we, you know, we can't sit around and, and just let this, this thing kind of bleed to death and, and, and us bleed to death with it. Um, and then the report suggests a possible way forward, and, and it says... Um, for example, in the first bullet point, although the parties did not agree, we believe that a restructuring of the full programme could offer a way forward. The restructuring would extend the use of the card beyond the current contract end date. BA and Pockle would prepare for a rapid increase thereafter in benefit payments via the banking system. Pockle could by then be ready to offer a competitively priced service for customers who still wish to use post offices for access to cash in this new environment. Pathway would be closer to recouping its investment. A second option, so this is the alternative, less risky in program management terms, would be to de-scope the program by stopping the benefit payment card while still allowing time for BA and Pockle to prepare for ACT. So, so what were the proposals being put forward by the expert group at that stage? Well, as, as I understand that, um, what they're saying was we we could um, uh, propose going forward still on the basis of the benefit payment card for a limited period um, and and then to have to switch over uh, the the alternative that they were um, uh, proposing I think was um, well, the one of scrapping the benefit payment card um, and then trying to move forward uh, without it until such time as uh, an alternative can be can be developed. Can we turn to page 11, which sets out some of the uh, problems that have been identified by the expert panel? And it's paragraph 22 that I'd like to look at. Um, so it says there, I'm going to read it just for the purposes of the transcript. However, there remain problems and difficulties in formally signing off requirements and solutions so that delivery dates can be planned and agreed. For example, there's not yet a stable baseline requirement formally agreed by all parties on which plans and key milestones can be agreed. The parties have yet to sign off proposals to descope release two into new release two a partial solution ready for the start of national rollout and new release 2 plus, the full solution to be available later. There's no agreed acceptance plan or timescale for acceptance, which puts at risk the timetable for contractual acceptance of the system. There's no consensus on the length of model office testing, live trial, uh, and the contingency uh, to be allowed. There's no agreement on the rate of rollout or beat rate. There's no agreed timescales for change control decisions. Version four of the master plan has not been signed off and there is no formal agreement with, uh, about the conditions for deciding that rollout 
has been completed, and hence the dates proposed for the start of live trial and the rollout to all 19,000 post offices are at risk. Uh, and over the page, please, to paragraph 27. This is, again, a mention of the repost concerns. It says, although we believe the architecture to be viable, there is a concern that the system is necessarily heavily dependent on the third-party middleware product, repost. This risk will persist, and steps must be taken to manage this risk over the operational lifetime of the system, in addition to those steps already taken in the development stages by ICL and Pathway. If as is confidently predicted, and I think this is a point that you were making earlier by ICL, uh, this product becomes a postal industry standard, this risk is significantly mitigated. Pathway has also taken steps to cover their dependency on repost by holding a copy of the source code and by training their staff in its use. Um, now, again, those passages that I, I've just mentioned, there are certainly risks that are being highlighted. They certainly regards are. to the Horizon project. Yes. Um, do you know how your department envisaged um, that monitoring would take place with regards to the operational lifetime of Horizon? Uh, I don't think uh, that we had uh, any plans to closely monitor this on a day to day basis. Um, Horizon had become a political issue with ministers involved, uh, and ministers were just concerned to get a solution. Um, we were not concerned to stand over the thing um, and try to see whether each individual little bit can get properly resolved. We just wanted to know whether what ministers had agreed to uh, could be delivered in time, and if it couldn't, uh, then it comes back for some decisions on what we do in, 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 in those new circumstances. As far as we were concerned, all, all of these things here, and, and, and I agree there are, there are quite a, a lot of them, uh, were for the parties involved to solve. And they were not saying to us that uh, those issues could not be uh, resolved. Uh, they'd been flagged up as, as things that, that, that needed to be uh, put right. I, I again find this um, uh, reference to uh, repost um, a, a little confusing because if it had always been part of the system, then I'm not sure what the, what the issue was. I, I knew that it needed to become part of the system uh, in order to uh, allow the functionality that uh, Pockel wanted to see for the future. I mean, if I've got that wrong, and then I, I apologise. No, I mean, sticking with repost, um, we know, for example, uh, that there was a known bug that identified later on that we refer to as the calendar square bug. Um, 2000 and onwards. Um, was there anyone in government tracking these kinds of issues that were highlighted uh, in this report? I'm not aware that there was anyone in, in certainly in DTI. Um, I don't know what DSS were, were, were doing, um, but not tracking it on a, a sort of day, day by day, issue by issue basis. Because a report of this kind, it, it provides a snapshot in time, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, and I think you've said that you would have relied on the post office to have followed these kinds of matters forward. Uh, the te highly technical matters. Uh, such uh, like that. Uh, well, I'm sure that if highly technical matters looked as though they could be showstoppers, uh, then they would have been escalated up uh, within the post office. Uh, but the post office is, as you know, a very big organisation and uh, lots of uh, different bits and functions of it. So uh, I don't think the board would have seen, uh, seen it as its job to follow these issues on a day-by-day on a -day basis to make sure that they were getting resolved. 
like us, they would want to know whether everything is going to be OK to go ahead. Um, I'm going to move on to November of 1998. Can we look at Bayes 0000181, please? Are you content? We do usually take a morning break. We, we've started quite late today. Are you happy? No, I, 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 I'm content to go on if that's what you wish Absolutely. to do. Please do tell me if you would like to at any stage. Though. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's look at this document. Um, one thing that you've also referred to in your witness statement is a KPMG report um, addressing technical issues. And I just wanted to, to cover that off as well. Um, do you recognise this document? I think it's an annex to a, a ministerial submission. Yes, yes. And it talks there of the three options. Option one, continuing with Horizon. Option two, continuing with the project minus the benefit card. And option three, cancellation of the project. Can we look at page three, please? Option three, uh, option two, sorry, it is the um, continuation minus the benefit card. And it says there, KPMG have confirmed that option two is technically and commercially feasible. Uh, again, similar to the kind of language that we heard uh, from that expert's report, uh, feasibility, um, viability. Uh, do you consider those si similar terms that um, the experts there are looking into feasibility rather than, for example, reliability? That might be a better word, yes. Would it be fair to say that the focus of the government at this stage, uh, at that time, was whether the project was possible rather than whether it would be, for example, reliable? Uh, of course, we would want to see that it was, that it was reliable. Um, it was going to be responsible for making an enormous number of if you like, state payments or benefits to a great number of people living all over the country. Um, and uh, it, it needed to work, it needed to be reliable, it needed to be relatively easy to use. But we saw the task that was set for the independent group was uh, whether the system was viable. And if we look at some of these KPMG documents, we can see there that their task was whether it was feasible. Um, do, you, do you see the, the difference between that and asking somebody uh, whether the system is reliable or, or to analyse and assess the reliability of the system? Um, I, I, I think, it, of, 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 course the, the, of course, financial issues um, came into all of this, but I don't think in the context that we've discussed so far this morning, um, we were talking ab about anything other than whether the system could work. Can we look at Bayes 40179? Um, this is another document that describes the, the work that KPMG were carrying out. I think you wrote this um, ministerial submission. Yes. Looks like to it. the Secretary of State, and this is the 6th of November, 1998. And it's over the page, please, paragraphs 5 and 6, which discuss, to some extent, KPMG's role. And it says there, to assist with the first strand of work, the negotiations between BA slash Pockle and ICL, Graham Corbett, Deputy Chairman of the MMC and former Finance Director of Eurotunnel, was appointed to chair the negotiations. KPMG were appointed to assist him, particularly in understanding the uh, and validating the business cases of each of the contracting parties. And then the next paragraph, KPMG were also asked to undertake a major piece of work on the second strand of, act of activity, that of enabling value for money and comparisons to be made between three options. It may assist if I take you to one further document that relates to KPMG, and that is HMT 705. <coughs> this is a KPMG report, or interim, I think it's a progress report. And perhaps we could, I think you're named there as one of the recipients. 
And perhaps we can just scroll to the final page of that, page five. It again addresses option two, viability. And it says, having examined the high-level architecture of ICL pathway, it would appear that option two is technically feasible. Indeed, pathway are actively marketing the system to overseas post offices without the benefits payment card. Again, I think that's something that you mentioned earlier, that it was um, being used abroad in other post offices. Repost. Repost. Yes. Um, Again, there, we see reference to technical feasibility and yep. KPMG having examined the high-level architecture. Um, did you understand anybody to be producing at that stage a report that went into the, the detail of, for example, uh, bugs and errors or technical um, concerns about reliability? I, I don't think so. Here, uh, we have moved on, uh, uh, apart from the uh, uh, high-level architecture bit, we are here talking about um, financial viability of, of, the, pro of the project um, and, 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 and whether um, the, f the financial uh, attributes would, could be made to be acceptable to... Uh, ICL uh, and to uh, and to the post office. So uh, now I think um, Mr. Corbett was 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 brought in uh, and KPMG uh, to to look at to look at these things because now we're kind of moving more towards um, we think we know where the system is is going in a physical sense um, now. Uh, does it make commercial sense? Can it be made to make commercial financial sense? But one thing that KPMG has looked at is the high level of Yes, yes. And it said that it's technically feasible. Yep. Again, um, they, they believe that it's technically sound and, and can work. I suppose technically sound may be different to technically feasible. Uh, and I think the, the point I'm really making is at the DTI, were you interpreting these reports as signing off the Horizon system? No. No, I, d I don't think so. Um, I, I think we were reassured by these reports that there was something there that could be made to fulfil the functions that uh, we needed from it. I don't think at, at any stage we were saying, oh, OK, this is now... Um, a, a, an absolute done deal. It's a masterpiece. It will work. No problems with that. We can forget about that uh, in, in, entirely. Um, but I think these um, these reports were giving us reassurance that the thing was going in the right direction and could continue to be uh, made um, sound in wind and limb. Albeit subject to the risks that we've seen identified in the absolutely, report. absolutely. Um, can we look uh, at a document from December of 1998, and that is CBO uh, 001401 underscore 072. Thank you very much. This, this is a document that I'm afraid we, we've only sent you quite recently. Have you had a chance to have a look at that? I, I had. I've, I've sort of skimmed it, yes. Thank you. Um, it's a letter or a note to the Prime Minister from Jeff Mulgan. Do you remember who Jeff Mulgan was? Uh, I think he was a, a special advisor I to the Prime Minister. I think he was a special advisor to Lord Falconer. Oh, thank you. Um, would you have seen this document at the time? Uh, I would expect to have done yes. I'll just read the, the underlined part of um, paragraph one. A decision now needs to be taken on whether to proceed with the Horizon project. Um, and can we go over the page, please? I'm going to read paragraph four in its entirety for the record. It says, however, the decision is not clear cut. The problems that have beset this project may well continue. Continuation would lock the government in for 10 to 12 years uh, to what many see as a flawed system 
Cancellation, on the other hand, would enable the post office to take advantage of newer, cheaper, and more flexible technology, while the DSS could move rapidly to paying benefits into people's bank accounts. Cancellation would also release around two to three billion pounds over the next decade to be spent in other ways to support and automate the post office. Um, and paragraph six, in making a judgment, the following issues are paramount, and it's that first bullet point that I want to focus on. It says, the virtues of the project itself. Overall, Horizon now looks increasingly flawed. It is centered around a technology, the benefit payment card, that is both over-engineered and very expensive and likely soon to be obsolete. Indeed, ICL acknowledge that the benefit payment card will have no commercial value to them at the end of the project. Although they remain underdeveloped, the alternatives, which involve a simpler off-the-shelf banking technology, look increasingly attractive, offering a route to universal banking, automated post offices, and better provision of government information. Um, were you aware at that time of the suggestion that the technology had been over-engineered? Um, I, I don't... I don't know exactly what is meant um, by that. Um, I, I'm sure that ICL uh, would have wanted to uh, do everything that they could, to put everything that they could into the system to make sure that when it was rolled out in these huge numbers, that it would that it would all work. You can look at it afterwards, I suppose, and say, well, you didn't really need to go to quite these lengths. Uh, look, it, it works an absolute uh, treat. Nothing ever goes wrong with it. You could have cut some corners. You might have had one or two things, uh, one or two things being uh, thrown up, but, but it would have been good enough. Um, I think the, 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 in a way, um, the way that I that I read this this whole piece um, is that it would be so much easier uh, if we weren't starting from where we are starting. Uh, if we could start with a clean sheet of paper, uh, life would be so much simpler. But the point underlying it all was, but we're not starting with a clean sheet of paper. Uh, we've got ICL involved in a major, major project, um, the collapse of which will be have serious implications, for, as I said, uh, for, for them, for Fujitsu, uh, for uh, inward investment, for the private finance and initiative and so on. And what do you do about the whole thing of the post office counters network? Um, so... I, I understand absolutely what this is saying. My reaction to it is, uh, yeah, but we're not starting with a clean sheet of paper. We've got what we've got, and we probably need to try to make the best of it. Could we go over the page, please, to paragraph seven? Um, in fact, it may be over two pages. Thank you very much. It says that departments remain divided. Alistair Darling remains strongly opposed to continuing. Ian McCartney for the DTI will argue strongly for accepting a deal. Peter Mandelson has largely kept out of the discussions. The Treasury is divided at official level, but Stephen Byers will probably, on balance, want to accept the deal for pragmatic reasons, even though he would prefer to cancel. Yes. Is that an accurate reflection of the respective positions at that stage? I think absolutely so, yes. Um, and then moving on to the next paragraph. At first glance, most of the factors point towards continuation. However, my view, which Lord Falconer broadly shares, is that although short-term considerations and expedience point strongly towards making a deal, this will, in the long term, prove unsatisfactory. Leaving the post office and government dependent on a hugely expensive, inflexible, inappropriate and possibly unreliable system. Um, do you know where those concerns about reliability came from? Uh, I, I suppose they came 
from some of what we've seen uh, that there are risks attached to uh, to all of this, um, and the benefits agency, which is which was much closer to the project than we were, for example, um, uh, had, I think, increasingly cast doubts on ICL's ability to to deliver that. They 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 they, they didn't want the project from the word go. Uh, and so they were always rather hostile to it, and I'm sure that they would have interpreted a lot of these caveats that we've seen um, as, well, look, look at all this, look at all this, it's, it's going to be awful, isn't it? Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we'll have spent a huge amount of money, and we won't actually have achieved our longer-term objectives with it. If we go to the final page, that there are some handwritten notes. Now, we have a statement from uh, Sir Tony Blair now, uh, and his um, statement can be found at WITN 06080100. I'm not going to bring it up on screen, but that's just for, for the record and so that it is in evidence. Um, he has, uh, and sorry, can we go to the page before as well, which is where the handwriting starts? I can read you. Um, he, he's typed out this uh, handwriting just in case yeah, we can't I, I, read I, it. I think I can, in fact, read the handwriting. <laughs> well, I, I'll read, yeah. read you his interpretation of it. It is, I would favour option one, but for Jeff's statement that the system itself is flawed. Surely there must be a clear view on this. Speak to me on that, i.e., reading the enclosed paper, it all focuses on the financial deal, but there, are, um, there the risks are pretty even, probably coming down on the side of continuing. The real um, heart of it is the system itself. Yeah. Um, now, the message seems to be getting there to the Prime Minister uh, that the system itself has flaws, or is flawed. Um, where would he be getting that information from? Is that also... I mean, I, I suppose that's from the author of this letter. Yes. Who you've said has received it from... Uh, likely from the DSS. Is that a, a fair analysis of what's happened? There? Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is, it's a it's a fair a fair statement of uh, where you know where they were coming from, um, and uh, I don't think I I disagree with with very much of 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 what's said, um, it, but but all of that in the end had to be tempered by the political damage on the other side uh, of, of cancellation. Thank you. Um, those kinds of concerns, though, uh, about the system being flawed don't seem to appear to be articulated in, in DTI correspondence. Do you think that's, that's fair? That's a, from what um, you've seen of, of the submissions and the letters? That well, uh, a, a lot of the... Um, technical reports and so on uh, were appended to to briefing. Um, uh, I don't think that we were uh, trying to frighten ministers with some of the things that could go wrong. Um, I don't think either we were um, implying that everything is okay and all you're going to do is take a decision and everything will be wonderful. Um, uh, and I think that our ministers, like other ministers, were very well aware of the pressures that were increasing uh, almost day by day, that some decision wasn't taken and something moved forward. I mean, it, it, it just kind of got stuck in the mud, as it were. And all of that time... I can't remember what the number was, but um, several million pounds a day uh, were, were being thrown away. Because of its commitment to the project and to that option one, do you think that the DTI um, shied away from highlighting those kinds of problems at that time? Um, it, it's possible that we were misinterpreting the the gravity of of some of these things 
Um, but I don't think we were uh, any more biased one way or the other uh, than the, the technical reports that we were receiving. Um, can we look at Bayes 40418, please? Um, this is a letter from Peter Mandelson, who was at that time the Secretary of State. Yes. Uh, to Stephen Byers, who was the Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Um, w would you have drafted this kind of letter? Uh, probably. Okay. Um, can I, I'm going to read the first paragraph. It says, can we just scroll down slightly? Thank you. I was disappointed that our meeting yesterday was again unable to reach a clear decision on the way forward for the BA Pockel automation project. The continued uncertainty is becoming increasingly damaging for all parties concerned. Um, as I see it, the choice is a straightforward one. Um, to continue with Horizon, we'll need to secure heads of agreement. Within two or three years, Horizon will have equipped the post office with a modern IT system capable not only of handling the benefit payment card, but also front-end banking facilities in conjunction with the commercial banks. This will help to implement our social banking policies and to bring modern electronic government into communities uh, which other organizations simply do not reach. Uh, so uh, a positive uh, result of Horizon being implemented or su su suggested quite considerable benefits from Horizon. Uh, that, that such benefits could and should flow from proceeding with Horizon, yes. Uh, and then the next bullet point, uh, quite a bleak picture is painted, uh, or we can take a major step into the unknown, delaying the modernization of the post office counters network, risking the departure of existing clients, and virtually eliminating the possibility of attracting new ones. The damage to the confidence of sub-postmasters and the knock-on effect of network closures will produce political fallout, no matter how carefully we try to handle it. The reduction in the network will reduce our ability to extend social banking and modern government into the very communities we most wish to target. Our relations with Fujitsu, a major inward investor into the UK, over the past decade will be severely damaged, as would the credibility of PFI." Those are some of the things that you've been telling us about this morning. Um, would you accept that that quite a, a bleak picture is being well? I think I there? think what this was what this letter was doing um, was countering the letter from uh, was it Alastair Darling or, or, or Jeff Morgan or someone who who seemed to be painting um, a a very very different picture from the one that we were interpreting from the, the evidence that we had. Can we go over the page, please? There is still some way to go to complete the Horizon project, but the basic development work has been thoroughly evaluated by independent experts. Can, can I just pause there? Is that a reference to the expert group that we've seen? Yes, it is. And, uh, and I think the point there is that uh, those experts were saying that the basic development work was robust because it hadn't really moved much beyond that at the point that they were looking at it. So they were saying that, if you like, the nuts and bolts or the electronic equivalent of nuts and bolts, um, you know, they, they all looked the right ones and put together in the, in the, in the right order uh, in a way that would work and work reliably. Um, so I'll just read the, the whole of that sentence. It says, um, the basic development work has been thoroughly evaluated by independent experts who have pronounced it viable, robust, and of a design which should accommodate future technological <coughs> developments. Um, do you think that fairly accur uh, and accurately reflected what the independent group had found? Or do you think it was painting, again, a slightly rosy picture? Um, I, I, I think so. Uh, I mean, the technical group and other people um, accepted that the system, if it was going to do um, uh, proper smart card um, functions, uh, would 
need f further development work, but the, if you like, the architecture of the, of the whole thing um, looked as though it was suitable for those adaptions when they came along. Could we bring on screen, perhaps alongside this document, a document we, we've seen, it's poll 00028094. And it's, it's, thank you, that's the report. And if we look at page three of the report. Um, thank you, and so if we scroll down slightly, thank you. So this is where it says our view of the program is technically viable. There must be some risk around scalability and robustness because the system has to be tested at the level of component parts. And do you, do you think that that is fairly reflected in the statement that it is viable, robust, um, and of a design that should accommodate future technological developments? I, I, I think it broadly is, yes. Um, I mean, this says that technically viable, um, the, the system has been, been tested at the level of component parts. So the, the basic bits of it, which is what they had at that time, um, they kind of signed off as being fit for purpose. Um, but it doesn't in, in, in any way, shape or form say that the, you know, this means that the whole project, when it's completed, will be absolutely fine. It says as far as it's got, when we're looking at it, um, it, it, it looks good to us. Um, one of the things that the inquiry is trying to establish is where this term robust comes from. Um, and it's a, a phrase that we'll then see in quite a few documents from the DTI. Yes. Um, do, do you think that uh, effectively shorthand has been used there to describe a, a much more complex problem, or much more complex issue? Well, uh, I'm sure robust doesn't mean it'll bounce if you drop it on the floor. It's not, not that kind of um, robustness. Uh, I think uh, what it's saying is... Uh, the way that it's being built and put together um, should mean that, that in, in use, uh, in the way that it's likely to be used, it should stand up to the tasks being asked of it. Do, do you think that the risks that were highlighted by the independent group uh, should have been highlighted in this kind of correspondence? the risk to robustness that they identified. I, I, yes, uh, I don't, as I say, I don't think they were trying to say everything is perfect. Uh, what they're saying is we've, we've looked at it and as far as we can see, it looks at this stage to be okay. They're not saying we're, we're absolutely certain that it'll be okay when more work has been done on it. At, at this stage, it looks, it looks good, or good enough. And moving on to the next paragraph, it says, I believe the only sensible choice is to proceed with the Horizon project. It is the way forward which offers the least commercial and technological risk. Do you know where that came from, that it offers the least technological risk? No, I think that what, what it refers to, or what it's trying to refer to, is if you cancelled the project and you had to start from scratch again, um, you would be, because, because you've, then got, you've then got nothing, um, you, you don't know whether something else could be developed that would be that much better. I mean, you, you know what you've got. You don't know what you what you haven't got. It might, might be wonderful. It might be might be rubbish. At that stage, you, you were aware that the par ICL pathway, out of the three bidders, for example, posed the highest technological risk. I didn't know at the time. I was not involved in that at the time. I subsequently learned that uh, the parties had chosen ICL pathway 
because their proposal meant that ICL would be carrying the greatest risk, uh, was my understanding of... of uh, I mean, do you think in December 1998, um, the Secretary of State or those in, in high levels within the DTI uh, would have been aware that Pathway, in fact, had been found to pose the highest technological risk at the procurement stage? Uh, uh, probably not. Do you think that these I don't, kinds I don't know what DSS ministers would have would have known from the from the benefits agency but but I I don't think that was anything that was ever uh, brought to to our attention at the time do you think that uh, Peter Mandelson in this letter having referred to um, the system to be viable, robust, and of a design that should accommodate future technological developments, uh, and also highlighting that it offered the least technological risk. Do you, do you think that was trying to spin it a little bit um, and sound a bit positive? Um, in order I, I, don't, I don't think the um, technological, least technological risk was um, spinning it. I, I think if you were to throw away Horizon and then go out into the marketplace and try to get something else, uh, you don't know what you would get. So there would be a, a much bigger risk ar around that. Um, I'm not suggesting that you might not find something better, but there's a risk that you would find something worse. It wouldn't have posed the least technological risk, though. I mean, having nothing poses the least technological risk, doesn't it? Uh, it poses the least technological risk, but an enormous, enormous political risk. Yes, but do you think the phrase there, least technological risk, was really trying to um, make the, the risks involved in the project seem less than they were? No, I, I, well, I hope, it, I hope it wasn't interpreted like that. It wasn't intended to mean that. What it was intended to, to do, as I've just said, is to say, well, we've got something that we know here. Um, we think, not that there are no problems with it or no technological risks left, but we think that it's going to be okay. Uh, if you start from scratch again, um, that could be a greater risk. Can, before we, we break for lunch, can, can we look at um, CBO709, please? Um, now, this is a letter or a note from Jeremy Hayward. Um, it is effectively the response from the Prime Minister to yes. Jeff Morgan's yes. note uh, that we saw earlier. Um, and I'm going to read that second paragraph. It says, the Prime Minister was concerned about your view that the benefit payment card is over-engineered and is likely to be uh, soon to be obsolete. His clear preference would be to avoid cancelling the project, but to go for a variant of your option one and option two. We should retain the benefit payment card, but seek to ensure that over time it delivers real benefits and provides an effective transition path to a satisfactory long-term position. If necessary, the Prime Minister thinks it may be sensible to give ICL a financial incentive to improve the benefit card project in this way. Um, so this is just a few days after that letter from Peter Mandelson. Um, again, being quite frank about um, the over-engineering and likely to soon be obsolete uh, aspect of the, the benefit card payment aspect. Um, was there a feeling in the Department for Trade and Industry at this time that those kinds of issues just shouldn't be mentioned or, or should be underplayed? Sir, I'm not quite sure I understand. So we have it at exactly the same period as we have that Peter Mandelson letter. Yes. Uh, where, again, it, it's uh, referring to the issues that have been highlighted by Jeff Mulgan about the over-engineering. Yes, yes. I think his letter also referred to um, reliability problems. Um, that seems to be quite frank about those problems. Yes. Um, 
w was there a lack of candor about those kinds of issues uh, arising from DTI correspondence on these issues? Uh. Uh, again, is it, uh, were the DTI underplaying the technical concerns? Well, were they minimizing we certainly, them? We certainly weren't trying to talk them up. Um, uh, I'm quite, quite certain of, 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 of that. Um, I don't think we would have uh, argued that the benefit payment card, um, in the light of developments in the marketplace since the project had been started, um, has turned out to be the cleverest choice that, that could have been made. Um, but uh, come back to this point again, we, we've got what we've got and we need to try to make the, uh, the, the best of it. So you, you, you had an option of taking the project forward. I mean, if you, did, if you didn't want to abandon the, uh, if you didn't want to abandon Horizon um, and uh, as it were, uh, drop ICL off a, off a very high cliff. Um, so you, you, you want to continue with, with, uh, with ICL. So you have a choice of doing it with the benefit payment card, where in a sense, the longer you stick with it, the, the more you're investing in a technology that you know is not really going to be fit for purpose um, a bit further down the road. Uh, or do you drop the benefit payment card at this point and say, right, well, now you're going to have to find something quickly uh, that will serve for the future, um, some form of, of, of smart card. Um, but I think we, we all, we would have all agreed that the benefit payment card was, was not the best choice that, that could have been made in the light of experience. Do you think that the DTI and the DSS were, were so fundamentally locked into their positions uh, that effectively the DTI was supporting um, Horizon at any cost? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know at any cost. Um, I certainly think that we understood the major, major problems that would arise from scrapping Horizon. Um, as I said, uh, for, for ICL, for the post office counters, uh, network and, uh, and so on. So I think we were very solid, if you like, on the right answer. We maybe wish we didn't start from here, but the right answer, given where we are, has got to be to stick with this thing in one form or another. Thank you very much. So I think that might be an appropriate time to break for lunch. All right, that's fine by me. Um, are we on schedule to finish Mr. Civic at a reasonable time this afternoon, Mr. Blake? Yes, uh, we are. I mean, we, we could start perhaps at, at 10 to 2 rather than 5 to 2. All right, let's do that. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much.